All right, so today we're gonna make a bowl using the slab method. And I have a few examples to look at. Um, this first one here, you can see how it's got this kind of curved edge to it. It's got some texture on it here. And then it's got a pinch pot for the base. Pretty good sized pinch pot there to make it stand up like a pedestal. The second example here is a bowl that has three feet on the bottom. And you can see where there's these bumpy things going all the way around it and a couple of coils wrapped around the top and it's got a spiral design on the inside with a little bit of extra texture added to it. And it has a glaze that goes along the top and a separate one on the bottom, which that's actually, it's been glazed all in the chili gloss and then it has this strip at the top of the second color. Here's a third example, a very simple bowl. It has a coil base that's been kind of pinched into this base like that. And there's some texture added to that, texture inside the design, texture all the way around the bowl, and then texture on the inside as well as the rim. And this was all done with a ribbon tool on the inside and out, and then probably the end of a needle tool to make the lines at the top. And then the final one is this one here that has the same kind of base as this one. It's a coil that's been wrapped around there and smoothed out. It has two handles on it. It's got a coil at the top that's flattened out with these little spikes going all the way around. And then um, there's some texture on the handle here, texture on the underside of it, and then finally a design on the inside using two different glaze colors. So for starting this project, the first step is you need to choose a hump mold. And this is the one I've selected here. It's going to make a bowl that looks like this for the inside of it. It's number 14, which you want to record on your project worksheet. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to roll out your clay using two strips, uh, two thickness strips. And these are the ones I'm going to use here, the ones that are red on the end. Okay. And it said uh, select uh, one and a half to three pounds of clay, depending on the size and the thickness. So I have two and a half pounds of clay here. So you always start by wedging your clay when you start off. So get your clay and you're going to wedge that. Because you're using a bigger piece, it's a good idea to stand up while you're wedging it. Okay, so that's ready to go. Um, the next set, uh, let's see, so I still need to roll it out. So I'm gonna go ahead now and flatten this out once I've got it wedged. And I want to make it into what would be equivalent to a big fat hamburger patty as far as shape and all of that. Um, I don't want to make it thinner than these stretcher strips for sure, these thickness strips that is. And keep in mind it's going to wrap around a bowl so it should be more circular than anything. And so now I'm going to put the thickness strips on each side of it. And when you roll your clay, always start rolling in the middle and roll up and down on it. Also, if your clay is really wet or your rolling pin is really wet, they're going to stick together. So don't wet them before you start rolling them. I like to flip the clay over regularly, keeping the shape as consistently round as possible. And by rolling both sides of it and rolling up and down, it just keeps everything um, working well. Okay, I think I've got that rolled out all the way. So when you're rolling this, when you hear that sound of the wood on the roller, you know that you're all the way there. I usually, once I think I'm done, I'll put it back on there one time and I'll roll one last time and that's good. A couple of tips, if you roll your clay and the roller, the, the thickness strip is underneath there, it's gonna mess things up, so always keep it on the outside. Also, if you're rolling and you're not on the thickness strip, you're gonna make one side too thin. All right, so that's rolled out. So the next step is to use a rib to compress the clay. And so here's a rubber rib. I'm just gonna take this rib now, and I don't wanna gouge the clay. I'm just gonna go across it this way. And I'm compressing it. I usually change directions. So compressing the clay gives it a smooth surface. It gets rid of some of the canvas texture. Uh, it makes the clay stronger. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over. So just pick that up and gently flip it. I'm gonna compress the other side.
Okay, so we're gonna use a banding wheel and then just a yogurt container like this for a pedestal and get that as close to the center as possible so when it spins, it spins consistently around. Put your hump mold on top of it. And check that it's lined up pretty reasonably and then set your clay on top of that. And then begin molding from the top, bringing the clay down around the piece. Now because it's one big flat piece. It's gonna buckle a little bit on the outer, outer edge, but we'll uh, fix that in a bit. We just keep working our way around it. What we don't wanna do is roll the clay way down around underneath it. You want the clay to go straight down at the edge. So we're gonna cut all the extra off. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling with my fingers where the edge of the, uh, the hump mold is, and I'm going slightly past that when I'm pushing it down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use a needle tool to trim the bottom, which is actually gonna be the top of the bowl. Um, you do not wanna use an X-Acto knife because this will cut, it just kind of follows the clay, it'll cut into the plaster, it'll go up and down. Your needle tool should be nice and consistent on your cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke it in, I'm gonna move it up to where it's just right at the bottom of the plaster. And then I want my, you notice my needle tool is parallel to the table. I don't want an angle like this because it's gonna make the rim too thin if I do. I want the rim to be a blunt cut right now, just straight across. And I'm using my finger to make sure I hold everything down. Okay, so there's the extra clay. You can use this to add things to it or it can go back in the recycle bin till you're ready. But we need to make some type of a base for it or feet and then whatever else we wanna do. And on mine, I'm planning on making a base or feet and then some handles to go with it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over a minute so you can see what it looks like. So when you trim it off, it should, like I said, be a nice straight cut like this. You should not be cutting at some weird angle, but, but parallel to the tabletop. And that should make this edge fairly consistent all the way around. Now this clay needs to sit on this hump mold for about 20 minutes the, the plaster that the hump mold is made out of <clears throat> will absorb a lot of the water out of the clay and it'll make it leather hard. If you were in a real hurry, you could possibly set this in the direct sunlight or possibly under the uh, blow dryer for a few minutes and get it to firm up that way. But it's best if you can do this early in class and then let this firm up uh, while you're working on the base of it and making handles. So for my base, I'm gonna try a couple of different things. My original thought was to make a couple of feet I'm sorry, to make three feet or possibly four. Um, I like the tripod effect. It seems to be a little more stable than sorry, a little more stable than four feet. So I'm just going to re-wedge this whole batch here real quick.